Okay, so we shall begin. Um, once again, welcome everybody. Today's webinar will be recorded and uh, this will last around approximately about 40 minutes, somewhere in, in that region. Um, do type your questions into the chat window. You should see that on the right hand side. And of course, if you can't um, get your questions in, then of course you can email me uh, later on today. My email will be popping up on the screen very shortly. Okay, so what we got in store for you today. Um, so we're gonna start off with the usual CAD support and some technical notes. Uh, I'll explain why, some more deep explanation uh, about uh, the, the release. Then something for everybody, the performance of the software. Uh, so that of course affects everybody, regardless of license. And then of course turning, so we'll concentrate on turning. And of course, turn mill, mill turn will be included in that. And then milling, and of course that may include turn mill and mill turn because of course we do mill inside mill turn uh, machine tools uh, then we're going to have a quick look at wire edm some interesting enhancements taking place there and then finally um, maybe save the best to last machine tool configurations so cad support and technical notes so um, first of all this page which we see uh, every time we meet up I tend to call it keeping up with the Joneses, that uh, we just simply keep abreast of what our CAD partners are releasing. Um, and of course, if we miss anybody, then we can catch up with um, service packs. So fear not, we're, 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 we're always keeping up with uh, the latest releases of CAD. Uh, quite, uh, quite interesting there. We've managed to catch up with SolidWorks 2023, as you can see there. Also designer, so this is really a message to university schools, lecturers out there that uh, the uh, the companion designer license got missed out on the edu on the educational licenses last time. So we've made amends and now you'll see that automatically being added at EDCAM 2023. You'll just see it pop up in your in your license configuration for designer companion. Uh, we are a couple of way, well, maybe six weeks now into into release, and this morning we have actually had a, another um, software update. Um, so two software updates to keep you busy. So do head on over to the customer portal and download these. Um, obviously, we do catch up on any uh, little uh, issues that have gone into the software with our software updates, but we also do include enhancements that didn't quite make the full release and one that did catch my eye um because i have seen a lot of people still do this is do the 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 right hand click and go to manufacture via the pop out menu uh, this will work i know it works i've seen it work but unfortunately it does catch you out later on um so um yeah so it's just better not to do that so you'll now notice that you won't get that old static dialog box. So uh, you can still do the control M or the right right hand mouse key click, uh, but you will get the proper create milling sequence or turning sequence wizard when that pops up. And that's the best way to do it because obviously that will be filtering your work planes, bringing on your your toolkits and everything else that, um, that we see. So this is a more modernistic way. Um, and as I say, there are some very, very isolated small issues that you to do tend to see if you do it the old way so stick to the to the uh the the, the recommended way also from a, a technical point of view uh the tool store has also been updated so the sql server again we've just moved um and now we're now supporting the 29 2019 express so that would automatically happen if you're on standalone system um tool store databases you'll see the little red exclamation mark if you've if you've not been updated but if you are on a network and this is very important if you are on a network that too needs to be the server software and the network does need to be upgraded as well so again um, do go to the software download page download the server software and install it to the to the whatever PC you've nominated as a network server. So obviously EdgeCam can talk back to the uh, 2023 um, software. 
So yeah, it's very, very important. And of course, any questions, queries about this, and of course, our, our guys on the uh, support desk are there to help you all the time. Okay, so onto uh, the main menu, onto performance, uh, something for everybody. So again, we're targeting waveform roughing cycle, waveform cars, of course, it's the most popular type of algorithm, really, really popular. Um, and we're noticing that we're bringing down, depends on obviously the size of the part, whether you're wireframe, whether you're solid, but we are bringing down uh, the, 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 the calculation time uh, between 15 and 40 percent uh, and that's mainly on a nested pocket so you can see something quite typical here bosses within uh, a pocket so that sort of character apart you'd see uh, these time savings for and obviously this applies to everybody not just milling applications but multiplane and mill turn applications so time to break out of our powerpoint and on to uh, the software so this is a, a straight fight between EdgeCam 2022.1 and the new version 2023.1. Uh, and what we see here is a, a very, very typical roughing cycle with our solid and waveform switched on. So you may have seen me do this before. Uh, we use our bench, benchmark timer. We'll clear out the cache. That means that we'll start from the beginning. We'll start the regeneration and a internal windows clock will show the feedback will show the time on the feedback window and i'm going to do exactly the same here in 2023.1 so again if you've not seen this before if you watch the bottom left hand corner we've got the feedback window there's a, a, a microsoft timer now running uh, and this will give me the time uh, better to do it this way more scientific and not using a stopwatch so if we go back to 2022, we're still running here, as you can see. We're expecting that time to bob up. And we can see here at 38 seconds. And that's for 2022.1. So that's what you would have expected from previous release. And if I run over to today's version, as you can see there, we've got a nice time saving going on, 25 seconds. So nearly about 35, 40% time saving. And I've obviously cherry picked a smaller part because obviously we don't want to wait around here all afternoon waiting for this to regenerate. But obviously a bigger part, you get a much, much bigger time saving. Obviously it's, it's, it's exponential. So yeah, something for everybody, just load up 2023.1. That's the sort of time saving that you're going to benefit from on a nested pocket type uh, type component just clear that and we'll just clear that getting ready for the next uh, next presentation of course waveforms have been around with us for many years um should really be using it if unless you've got a very very good excuse um and remember also that within waveform you've got the extra parameters that allow you to um fine-tune the waveform algorithm Okay, let's just pop back to our PowerPoint and let's move on. So looking at turning, something for all the turners out there. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is the, the feature finder. So feature finder in turning, we have noticed that there's been a couple of issues when you go for the turned envelope. Um, and this is really presenting itself on the more complex, larger solid models, such as the type that you see on the screen where you've got cross holes and, as I say, the, uh, the, the parts begin to intersect. So we have actually seen customers remodeling the part to help turn envelope. That's OK if you've got the time, obviously, but it, um, it, is, it is a bit of a burden. Um, another workaround um, is to increase tolerance. So that makes EdgeCam stare at the part longer, it calculates longer, and most of the time it does give us a successful envelope. But unfortunately, it takes a lot, lot more longer to produce. So that uh, has been enhanced inside 2023.1. Another item here, brand new item in the finished grooving uh, cycle command is uh, a new parameter called tool width groove. So we get this very annoying message that you see in the top right here groove might be too narrow for the sensor retract 
so basically, I've got a, a, a size to size situation, three millimeter grooving tool, three, three millimeter groove doesn't really need any accuracy. Why can't I just um, plunge in, plunge back out again? So uh, that's now completely possible in 2023.1. You'll see now you've got this new tool width groove parameter. Uh, it will get rid of that annoying message. And there's a couple of other extra bits and pieces that you can enjoy within the within them plunge parameters. And it also is clever enough to look at a nested groove. So if it knows that, you know, I've got five grooves in a nested groove and two of the grooves are uh, compatible to the tool, they match perfectly uh, in both radius and in width. Uh, the tool will plunge into those two grooves. And obviously, this is really good for automation as well. So we, if you're working in the strategy manager, you don't have to do an awful lot extra work now. It will just do it for you. So all that scripting and logic that you might have had to do, might have had to do in the past, now that's gone. Just do it in one click. So the higher end licenses using the B-axis contouring cycle, um, new parameter called smoothing factor. And what this does is just basically um, gives us much more refined code, but also more importantly, um, it means that the B-axis on the machine doesn't uh, move too erratically. So it kind of, as the word might suggest, damp dampens it down. Uh, and you'll see this better in the, uh, in the, in the presentation. Rough profile turning cycle, so an alternative to the rough turn cycle, rough profile turning cycle, where we digitize the uh, the casting or the profile, and obviously digitize the feature, the tool follows the profile itself. Well, this can take um, quite a long time, depending again on the part and the back ends that you're using from the tool store. Um, to uh, gouge protect and rightly so it's looking around the area to make sure that the tool isn't going to gouge but it isn't going to gouge well sometimes you know that's going to be clear you just know the part you know the shape you know the size so rather than having the time burden waiting around for it to do all the gouge protection you can actually say we'll turn that off now so that's the new enhancement in 2023.1 and you'll notice when we do our presentation demonstration it'll be quite a, quite a significant time save there and also um, with the swarf command that we find in both rough turning and waveform turning uh, this is again going to give us quite a significant time saving so for those of us who do use the swarf clearance cycle you'll know that the tool is obliged to move back to the x and z positions and so therefore you can now trap this. You can now say, well, don't um, don't move both the axes, only move one of the axes, and therefore you've got um, a situation where you're where you're saving where you're saving time. And again, this will be seen in the demonstration. So, speaking of which, we'll move through to back to the uh, back to the products, and um, we'll show you these uh, these these uh, these changes. So. Uh, what we've got here is SedgeCam 2022.1. Uh, I'll just hide away a couple of bits so we can see this better. So this is the sort of situation that we would have suffered in the past. You'll see this turn envelope not making a very good job of it. And this is where people might have had to remodel it. Uh, as I said before, a workaround may have been uh, to increase tolerance so this is what you usually see. I'm on a metric part. And you should see 0.01 for tolerance. Here I've gone for 0 0.01, 0, 001 rather. Um, this will take a significant amount of time for it to create um, the envelope. Um, if I look at the same part in 2023.1, exactly the same part, you can see again, if I just turn off my machine, you can see this is to say the same part. If I now do feature finding in 2023, again, just checking all my parameters are correct with a normal tolerance, what you'll notice is it'll do it perfectly. So that's the enhancement. Any nasty turn envelopes should take just as normal now like any other feature. Back in 2022, what would have happened is that you, um, set that tolerance quite finer and it begins to calculate 
and it begins to calculate and it begins so that will stand and wait quite a while for it to calculate uh, again if you watch the bottom left it's still thinking about it so we'll leave that alone but it does take a, a significant amount of time that's not a very very large part so good old 2023.1 much better feature finding function so let's talk about the finished grooving cycle so if i just um regenerate this 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 tool path there we have that nasty message we have two nasty messages here because we've got two grooves so i can't get that tool directly into the size groove a bit annoying so what we'll now notice is that we've got a new checkbox we just edit these two cycles so with groove is our new checkbox again you'll notice we've got some extra parameters in here as well and the second cycle just turn on tool width groove and now what you should be noticing is that it enters and plunges the groove so not a not an issue there so the the what edgecam is looking for is the size of the tool it's got to match the the uh, the feature again it works in wireframe um, and it also doesn't match with the corner radius as well so just be aware that you are plunging the shape so it looks at corner radius there you go we get the perfect shape shall we just have a look at 2022 yeah we did get 2022 eventually to do it but uh as i say that's uh nicely demonstrates the time burden um need to wave the flag for a nested groove as well um that too again would be would be working in the same way just open that up so nested grooves and feature finder you've requested that the the full groove is one groove one feature as you can see here and again i'll just regenerate this is the what we would have suffered and seen back in 2022 but now if i just simply um, request to turn on the new checkbox tool width groove now we won't get the message and if we just bob along into the uh, machine simulator it will obviously still do a finished groove cycle in the usual way side wall down one side next side wall down to the middle but you'll also notice it will plunge the two size to size grooves there you go so that's perfect moving further on uh, we spoke about the um Axis extract, and this is to do with the swarf cutting command. Uh, don't forget, we meet swarf cutting in both rough turn, uh, rough turning, and waveform turning. Um, and I chose this particular part. I've done some work recently on DTLs, Webster Bennett's, what have you. Uh, and this is a really, really good type of shape. Um, this is about 50 inches big, a um, bit of a beast, and obviously the insert's not going to last very long. So what? Uh, we would normally do is ask the tool to uh, allow the, ask the cycle to retire at certain positions so we can check that the that the insert has still got wear in it and if not we would um, we would change the insert and we do this for both time and also for cuts so what we'll notice is that this particular cycle after so many cuts retires to a certain spot allows our check, uh, setter operator to just check where the what the inserts like and what we would do is normally we would run out code here and you see every so often we're stopping pausing so we can see that but the issue here is it it's the time again it's moving back to x and z and what we've got here is 55 minutes so it's better really don't move in x just move in z that's all i need you to do you don't need to keep going all the way back in x on a big part or a long shaft you'd see that um that time would grow so in 2023.1 on the swarf you just clear off that parameter for x don't forget we did have around 58 minutes here now you'll see more movements out in z it's not moving back in x and now we're down to 47 minutes so again a, a what an eight minute time saving um and obviously this is a very very large part i've only cut it in sections so um, this would be quite a big time saving bigger the part again bigger the time saving other item that i'd like to talk about is the uh, again a time saving so lots of time 
been saved here in 2023.1 with new functionality. Uh, again, similar part. Um, when we're checking for gouge protection, so it's good and right and proper that EdgeCam is constantly checking all the way around for any gouge collision that's going on. Here in the rough profiling cycle, um, typically a big meg file on the tool and we're checking all the way around making sure that we've got no collisions so the time to create that cycle um, would be um, overly too not or not well, but would be normal to us basically but if we can bring that down then all the all the better so if I do um, a clear cache and do the benchmark again let's just see how long this is taken with gouge protection on so this is the normal standard way that we would work gouge protection always on making sure that everything is completely safe again this timer is running and we'll look to the to the feedback window on the bottom left so 19 seconds to to complete all that work if I now go to the cycle and say, well, actually, I, I think I know better. I think I can I can pretty much confidently say that we're not going to get any gouges here because we're, we're in a nice open space, um, very, very big part. So we now disable, and this is the new checkbox, disable the holder collision checking. I do a quick regenerate in the background. And again, up against 19 seconds, which we see in the feedback window, we'll clear that cache again, we'll regenerate everything again. So it's a, a nice straight fight between the two conditions. We've now got that that, uh, that collision checking off. Now you can see you're down to nine seconds. And this is just one cycle on one part. So 19 is so like 10 seconds of, of number crunching time saving that you're making turning off turning off that function and being able to turn off that function is uh, is really the uh, the big bonus here remember that in the in the rough turning cycles you've already got that condition uh, that condition uh, is is here check everything so again if uh, if you this works the opposite way i suppose where you'd ask for it to be turned on and it's all about choices that now we've got the choice to say yay or nay uh, to these conditions and lastly the b-axis turning just open that up and i'll take that through into machine simulator some of you may recognize this part. This is the part that we did with our uh, friends over at Seco at our open house. This is a um, ceramic uh, ceramic insert on uh, stainless steel or something actually uh, a lot tougher. And this is what we usually would do. We'd use our B-axis to get into all them curves, save us a lot of tool changing. But you'll notice that, ooh, especially there, you know, it would um, maybe frighten people to see the the ATC to see the, the head moving so erratically. They're still doing the right job, but it'd be nice if we could just cut down those amount of movement. Sometimes it's more kinder to the machine tool. So in 2023.1, a new smoothing factor has been introduced. The higher the, the number, the higher the factor, the more smoothing you get. Um, so we'll just turn that on. And now if I bob ourselves back into machine simulator, You should absorb, observe the uh, less movement, a lot less movement. So it doesn't give everybody a, a nervous condition when you see that ATC moving. But of course, the sizing, the tolerance, the amount of output, still, still an accurate part. Okay, so that completes the turning uh, sections. Uh, I'll just have a quick look and see do we have any any questions coming in. Remember, you can click in the chat window give you uh, give you questions. I can't see any. Apologies if you have got one there, but I don't see any in my panel. But uh, 
we'll move on. Just <laughs> All right, so back to PowerPoint, back to certainly. Okay, to milling. Oh, yeah, there is a question there. Someone's asking about, yeah, tool store server. Yeah, so um, the software that we run to run our tool store is SQL. SQL itself is an independent body of software. We, again, just simply work with the uh, the latest version in the same way that we do with, say, Windows. Um, and SQL has moved on, so we move on with it. So inside SQL, inside EdgeCam, there's SQL Express, and SQL Express is free. It's always shipped with EdgeCam within the installation. It's just that if you've got a network tool store server, several colleagues looking over to one common network location you do need to upgrade that um, uh, on your server that's what we simply meant by uh, network server okay to milling um, some again some nice enhancements going on here uh, first thing um, really big cheer big shout here the chamfering cycle now supports the ball nose cutter uh, so beforehand we could only support taper cutters and this did cause a little bit of consternation because we are very aware that certain companies have certain standards of deburr and you can't have a, a taper it's got to be a ball nose it's got to be that rounded rolling shape so now that uh, limitation has been removed and we'll see in 2023.1 that chamfering cycle is supporting um, the ball nose cutter uh, so it's a very very big high frequency request a little bit of a maintenance type item here but i thought i would mention it it's with fresh finishing cycles so those are the advanced site uh, licenses so when you went for optimized it didn't optimize it always climbed and did conventional this is more to do with the linkage um there's too much stringent checking going on with link moves so you always found out you always got climb you always got the conventional obviously it's longer to do that than it would be to optimize shorter cycle time doing optimize so now you'll notice it now does optimize when you ask it to do optimize this one here inside the roofing cycle this is a big one um this again was a high frequency request um when we sheen part and it's got obviously a pocket and then bosses and islands within the pocket what i wish to do is have an independent offset for the bosses and that is now being uh, given to us in 2023.1 you'll see a new dialog box within inside the roofing mill mill roofing cycle called boss offsets Hold the collision check in so we've always collision checked everything uh, but the one thing that we missed out was rotary holes so playing our holes we've been doing forever you might remember 2021 we've done a collision checking now with the roughing cycles and all the back end holders are always checked as long as you've got fixture uh, turned on uh, check fixtures turned on uh, but we missed out on rotary holes so this is the condition that we'd see and obviously it is being checked as you can see here in the, in the screenshot what we'd like it to be is it automatically checks and removes the collision and that's what 2023 will do it will not only check but it will inform us as well so you'll notice that uh, you'll see feedback windows telling you what's been removed and you'll obviously notice you shouldn't see any red within machine simulator so that's a, a really nice one uh, to watch out for all right so back to our live presentations go to the mill cycles and we'll open up our next part so this is to do with the chamfer cycle and again some of you may not fully appreciate this uh this jumping technology so again i'm going to do a before and an after 2022 2023 so this is the scenario that we would have had back in 2022 um, I've asked it, as you can see here inside my profiling cycle, I have asked it to do optimized. Um, this is in the um, rest in the in the rest condition, I should uh, I should stress and point out. Um, what we want to do here is always, always follow our um, optimized, as we can see here. So we'll let that be. And. What we'll get, this is what we always got, 
because it's actually doing climb mill or conventional optimize should be mixing the two together so that was the challenge is that due to the stringent checking of linkage um, it always turned out to be climb conventional and of course because of that you'd, you'd get this time burden because obviously an optimized toolpath would be shorter so that's our that's what we want to see here moving on from that in 2022 when we went uh, and um, went for our chamfering cycle the chamfering cycle we set up in the normal way but as soon as I dismiss oops it say no you can't do this because you can only use a taper tool so that conditions have been removed at 2023.1 now we can use ball nose cutter so let's have a look at that same part here this is exactly the same part in 2023.1 here's this condition we spoke about same part i have got optimized switched on in 2023 as you can see here um and what i'll just simply do is i'll refresh i'll regenerate the tool path remember we had I forgot now seven minutes 52 in previous version now we're down to five minutes and 46 so and again a nice time saving and of course we are optimizing linkage is perfect rolling in rolling out and doing climbing convention altogether i.e optimized then what we want to do is do some chamfering uh, we've got our 20 millimeter ball nose up and running so we'll go here we'll go chamfering we'll set the chamfering cycle up in the same way solid in this case climb the burning looks fine all good no message we would have got the message before it's quite happy to use uh, this particular tool on this uh, part and there we have our chamfering cycle using the ball nose cutter so that's really good that means that um, we can have a choice of tooling now with that chamfering cycle the other exciting one certainly for me was offsets in the roughing cycle so this is one that we've been able to work around we work around because um, we can create several cycles and several boundaries awful lot of messing basically but this is the scenario that i'd like to suggest is that i've got this part this part um, i've got quite a thin wall to the outside one and a half mil um, and what i want to do is i don't really want to take any more off so i've got my roughing cycle half a mil offset and I'd rather leave it at half a mil because if I go any more, I'll be jeopardizing the thin wall. Now, if I pop over into rapid result, and we should be using rapid result for quick toolpath and play away there, it becomes pretty obvious what the problem is. I'll, I'll turn on view comparison just to prove what the problem is. You'll notice that because of the offset, it's unable to make its way around the bosses. So, of course, yeah, I can lessen my offset so it can get into the boss area but then it jeopardizes the thin wall on the pocket so what i'm gonna to have to do now is make two extra cycles and extra boundaries to try and work inside them pockets it's pretty annoying but hey presto in 2023.1 we've got this brand new parameter boss offsets this is an independent value that's applied just to the bosses only so i'm putting point one in here the pockets will still have half a millimeter offset but the bosses now will have 0.1 and again just to prove that if we go into rapid result oh needs to just do a quick refresh and into rapid result and play away now we can see we've we've gone into them gone into them boss areas and this got me thinking that this is a really nice excuse to just um, talk about NC Simul. So you might remember two or three versions ago, we released um, NC Simul Essential for three axis milling. Um, this is a really, really nice tool for doing more checking for stock. We obviously can show the stock inside machine simulator, but NC Simul Essential does a little, a, a much better job. So we are simulating still the CL code. If you obviously want full blown uh, back plotting, as we would have called it, then that has to be the NC Simul full license. 
So as you can see here on the right hand side, we are running the CL data. So I'll, I'll run this CL data. And this would be pretty much what we'd see inside EdgeCam's machine simulator. But this view comparison tool comes into its own. So what we can do here is if I click the sidewalls, you'll notice I'm getting my 0.5, just about, notice that. But to the bosses, the click, I can see my uh, very accurate 0 0.09, 0 0.1. Um, so yeah, so that proves that the, the new parameter has worked inside a roughing cycle. And again, let's wave the flag there for NC Simul Essential. That's one of the nice tools that you get um, alongside the package. And collision checking of the rotary holes. So we have always collision checked, but it'd be nice if we automatically got reminded and those collisions removed. So we're looking at the 2022.1 component file. I've chosen a lathe condition here. And we'll turn on our stop at collision. So we're on rotary holes pointing directly into the center. And that is what we'd like, you know, we need to be told about it. So therefore we ourselves can take evasive action, but it would be better if EdgeCam took the evasive action for us. So I'm just going to do a, a regenerate inside 2023.1. So the previous SEAL cycle now adopts the 2023.1 technology. Um, you may already notice if you're still awake, you can see something's happened in feedback. It's saying that we've got collisions. And if we move to machine simulator and play away, those holes have now been taken out of the algorithm. So we're machining what we can. And obviously it's down to us to maybe move the part or whatever to allow us to machine them, them areas again. So that's rotary holes. So moving forward, um, obviously EdgeCam is a very holistic piece of software, serves all, all parts of production engineering, and obviously Wire EDM is parts of production engineering. Um, this is to do with what I would call the code wizard of Wire EDM. So the machine parameters have been updated for five uh, major controllers. Certainly the, the, the wireware compensation one is a big one inside the SODIC um, post processors. So you've just got extra capability within machine configurations for 2023 in Wire EDM. Um, and something for everybody, the internal corner parameters now been added. This used to be hard coded previously. So now, and that led to problems with very small parts. You'd get uh, twizzle radiuses being created. Um, we need to control that. So now you'll notice that's now controllable for 2023.1. And the Aji Sharmil, uh, there's two different permutations of one particular post, um, sequential and dynamic. So they two are being supported. OK, lastly, uh, as time moves on, we're looking at uh, machine tool configurations. Uh, and this is a, a real big one. Obviously, the machine tool builders keep ourselves, uh, keep us on our to <coughs> toes. We, we had six axis support uh, in our previous uh, release, and this has now been enhanced. So what we mean is two on the head and one on the table. So that gives us them three plus another three X, Y, Z gives us six. Uh, and we've extended this onto mutated heads. So, and also onto, um, onto horizontal and vertical machine tools. So they, them two have also been added. So I think previous before we had, I think horizontal, now we had vertical. Um, basically inside, it's all the magic's done inside the code wizard. So inside code wizard, this is the legal configuration you, you could have taken before. And now you can see now that in the rotary table, we can now select on the first is C and then rotary head B and A. That wouldn't have been actually possible. You couldn't have clicked them radio buttons in previous version. And this gives us the right configuration. Um, always a little bit difficult to, to, to completely um, describe what I'm talking about. So I thought we'll let a video do the talking. So here we have mutated head and rotary table. Here's our six axis moving movements. 
and here we get some um, angle drilling and then what we'll do here is we'll lock out the table and let the head do all the work and again similar or same here where we move the move all the axes around and keep that table static as well so in looking at this uh, this configuration it's really the magic is really inside the code wizard i've already set the code wizard up so i won't uh won't show you that because i guess it's a bit too deep and technical but what is important is that there's a couple of extra parameters being given to us within within side uh, move index um which i'd like to show you so this is the loosely based on the examples that we saw um inside the videos just take this through straight into machining we'll see here where i'm locking out the table and letting the head do all the work you can probably see there we've got five axis simultaneous five axis machining going on so see here now the mutated configuration we didn't support mutated beforehand now we do okay and all gouge protected as well and the select axis command has been upgraded as well so this looks back to the code wizard and sees what was what's legal what's not legal with this particular machine so again we've got grayness here because again the post process is not supporting that configuration so that's something that uh, again helps you to program correctly in the cam area both these two machine tools by the way are supplied um, these are sample post processes that you'll see in 2023 if you've got something similar you can maybe copy these We've just obviously added on uh, some more graphics. And this again, very much like that video where we see the the whole cycle, one whole cycle is automatically angling itself. So there's no need to create multiple work planes. The, the head will just do that. Okay, let that go so i'll see a couple of questions bobbing up again uh will tombstone machining be in this webinar um no because i'm only including what's inside 2023 so i'm not aware of any extra big enhancements with uh with tombstone uh a good old question there for barrel cutters that is coming i know um we've got lots and lots of different configurations of barrel cutters but i i definitely know that's on our roadmap and uh, should be coming certainly if i'm not talking about it this time next year i might be talking about it earlier um, because we might get that into um, into su updates um, and do we have i think what we say now we have you know, a database for a spree so that's probably more to do with um yeah with the uh with um with databases, yeah, with post processor databases, yeah, we do have a, a post processor database for EdgeCam in the same way that you do um, have uh, for a spree. And our head change machine formats going to be available in the future? Yes. Um, again, that is on the, the roadmap. That is, again, a frequently asked question. Um, we are aware of that, and that hopefully will uh, be coming to, um, uh, if not this, in, in, if not in the SU, certainly in uh, future releases um thanks for those questions um i managed to just catch him on time um we'll just move back and finish off here so i did say between 30 and 40 minutes so i'm just on 40 minutes um i do invite questions i'll leave that up for a moment or two so if you do have any one-to-one -one questions you want to ask me then just uh, jot down my email there and we'll get uh, get an answer over to you if i can't answer it then certainly i'm sure colleagues can do use our support desk do download the the latest issues don't forget the um 
SQL Express uh, update. Um, I will now finish off. I'll thank you again for your attendance. Thank you for sparing the time to listen to me today. I have recorded it, so this will be up on uh, the portal very, very shortly. Um, wish you all a very pleasant day and a very pleasant weekend and i hope england do win the cricket okay everybody thank you very much goodbye